No, they've decided to wake up a little bit now, but it's not going to be long that they're going to be up. I'm pretty sure you're going to see them trotting around a bit, playing a bit, much like when we first arrived and then back down to sleep. But look at the scent marking going on here in front. Lots of rolling around. So they're marking their scent all over the ground here. That's basically the way that they do it. You can see one in the background, one closest to us that is rolling and using those almost the sort of glands that are underneath their eyes that are basically marking that area and marking the ground and ensuring that they are scenting this area so if the sands pack had to come along they'll then pick up that there was dogs here that marked and made sure that this is their area and then they'll have to try and either mark over it or they're going to move out of the area and head back in the direction that they came but you can see everybody's slowly starting to settle back down again it's a bit of a yawning and carrying on but the rest of them will eventually start lying down there we go so you can see they're right here all around us which is really awesome <laughs> i love it when they go around like this Yvonne, the largest pack that I've ever seen um, and spent a lot of time with was a pack that came out of the Manuleti many years ago in, in 2012. And that pack was at that stage 32 wild dogs. So this is only 13, so you can imagine 32, how many that is. This is a fair number of dogs, as you can see, they kind of spread out. So 32 is pretty insane. I remember once watching them on a morning on Encoro, on the open area of Encoro, where they killed seven Impala and a Wildebeest in the space of about 45 minutes. It was just absolute massacre that took place between the 32 of them. It was really amazing to watch and how clinical they were. As 32 dogs, nothing had a chance to escape because things would run and all they would do is end up running straight into another wild dog and being pulled down. So 32 is the biggest I've seen. I know of people that have seen packs that are over 40, but personally I've never seen that myself. I believe at one point the the pack that that male dog with the collar comes from that pack at one point i think got to over 40 at, um, in about two three years ago and then split and so it's it does happen when they get to that many it's difficult to feed that many dogs so they do often then split into different groupings But you can see they're all settling back down again. It's really not too much going on. It's typical of the dogs is that they get up, there's a bit of greeting, there's a bit of interaction. And then as soon as they kind of realize not much is happening, then they back down again and, and taking it easy and everyone's resting. So there'll be lots of periods of this kind of activity this afternoon. And it's exactly like what we saw this morning is that there's a periods of them chasing the females around a little bit. And then once that's done, you'll find a situation where everybody sits down and rests. And until such time as they actually sort of the light gets a little bit dingier then you'll find that they're going to start getting up and starting to hunt and move into different areas to start looking for food so for now it's still just all about kind of resting and recuperating and then the hunt will start and when they do decide to move they cover distance incredibly fast unless they obviously catch something fairly close by but generally they cover distance in a very quick manner and it's tough to keep up with them and even if we had the drone up and running today, we wouldn't be able to fly it in this wind because the wind is really still gusting. But it would be the ideal thing. They are the ideal animal when it comes to um, watching them hunt from the air. They really do have an incredible way about them and an incredible... movements that they're able to, to hunt. And the drone really captures all of that. Sorry, I was just watching. There's a car of people that was just asking for directions that are going towards the lodge we ride off the main road that goes towards juma camp and so they were just asking exactly where they need to go so just pointing them in the right direction so that they can make their way to the lodge itself and not be left behind on game drive but there we go that period of excitement is over in all of two seconds really Palin, I suppose you could put look at it that way. The wild dogs are very similar to wolves and dingoes in the way that they, they are very social. There's an alpha ranking system or an alpha female and alpha male. Um, they hunt in packs. They, they're very similar in that regard. So you find the world over that most of the dog species are fairly sociable animals and, and do form packs together and hunt in packs. Um, so yes, very similar to wolves in a lot of respects. Not quite as large and, and definitely do not take on quite as big animals as what the wolves do but still just as an intelligent and just as um, 
incredible in the way that they look after their young ones and they have this dynamic within the pack. I think the wolves are probably a little bit tighter knit than what we see from the dogs. The dogs, like I say, tend to be quite transient and move between packs, but the wolves tend to, as far as I understand it, wolves tend to be quite sort of tight knit groupings that don't really disperse too much from one another. I could, of course, be completely wrong. I've never spent any time with wolves, but from what I've seen and, and what I have can make out, I would imagine that it's similar, although probably find that they are actually a bit more like the dogs in some ways it's just that the populations of both of these animals unfortunately is not really that big in in certain areas and it's interesting how the wolves and the wild dogs have both had a similar kind of history in that there's been a lot of issues um, plaguing them and, and a lot of persecution from people because of the nature of the way that they move they both here in africa with the dogs and and the wolves in in europe and other parts of the world and in the, and in the North America they are seen as you know these animals that are completely destructive towards the lifestyles of people in that they you know destroy live uh, livestock and kill a lot of animals and that they ferocious beasts that are going to kill you and they're not actually like that even wolves from what I can gather as much as they can be dangerous they're not inherently prone to hunting down people and killing them as much as what movies and everybody else would have you believe they're actually more sort of relaxed animals and, and animals that kind of try and go after their natural prey items rather than people so you can see still sniffing around still a lot of kind of interaction between them not quite as much frenzied mating behavior as we saw this morning but still Stephanie, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, dingoes, bar f the difference between dingoes and wild dogs, bar the fact that dingoes occur in Australasia and, and obviously wild dogs here in Africa, we don't get dingoes here in South Africa or in any part of Africa, actually. Um, so I think the, probably the best way to put it, and from what I can gather, is that a dingo is a native to the Australian area, whereas wild dogs to Africa, and, and there is slight physiological differences. Dingoes don't quite look anything like wild dogs. They don't have the black markings or that very, very sort of big ear shape. Um, they're more a tan color from what I've seen, and they can be domesticated a lot easier than what wild dogs can. But other than that, I'm sure they're still from the same family, so a very similar dental structure, would have a very similar bone structure, but at the end of the day, they just occur on different continents so it's much like let's say a snow leopard and a leopard it's just different places different habits different habitats um, and they slightly then will be tweaked for those environments so that's maybe why the dingoes don't have these patterns they occur in areas of the dry parts of the Australian outback and that's areas where they need a bit more of a plain appearance to blend in who knows it's that's that's basically the same difference but they they structurally will still be a dog family so they will still have the right toe structures and and mouth structures and those kind of things as well you see once again another car arrives and everybody starts to pop heads up and move around and sniff at one another Lily, wild dogs will most certainly chase after wild cats. I have seen them chasing wild cats up a tree. I've seen them chasing civets, genets. Obviously, those are not cats, but I've also seen them tree. I don't even know how many leopards in my time. They have a particular hatred for leopard, and they see a leopard, and they will go running in and chasing them. But they need to be careful because some leopards are not very tolerant of said wild dogs and i have seen leopards taking wild dogs so i've seen a leopard being up in a tree and then just as the dogs all turned their back it came down like a flash grabbed the dog at the back and went back up the tree again and held it in its mouth so <laughs> they have to be careful but they do give leopards a hard time wild dogs often will chase leopards up trees and, and put them up there and bounce around at the base in as a bunch of hooligans but they do need to be a little bit careful from time to time Now you can see it's still the same process where they're sniffing genitals, they're trying to kind of mate with one another but it's not really going very well. Both of those are male dogs by the way, so they need to find the females which I think are all curled up on my left hand side at the moment. So there is a little bit of movement and there's a lot more movement than when we first got here and it will increase as the afternoon goes on but while we sit with them and enjoy their sort of antics and see whether or not we do start to wake up, let's have a look and go across to Jamie and see how she's doing with her rather sleepy kitties.